Welcome back to the Align Podcast. My name is Aaron Alexander. Today's episode is with my friend, David Nurse. He is the author of Pivot and Go. He is a ex-professional basketball player, and he is the mindset coach of a whole plethora of NBA basketball players today. This conversation is highly diverse, I would say. It starts off talking about his upcoming book, Pivot and Go, which is out in stores, I think it's the first week of August, so August 4th or so. So it's up for pre-sale now. And uh, we end up touching on a bit about mindset, uh, how to get out of slumps and things of that sort. And then most of the conversation ends up talking about God. We share differing beliefs and we got to explore various different challenging questions of what the hell are we doing here in the first place so a really fun conversation I also talk about conspiracy theories and things like that super fun i think you guys are going to really enjoy it it was a very candid genuine conversation and it was recorded here at my home in santa monica inside of my sauna we did some cold plunging before it was a fabulous experience if you guys are interested in learning how to mobilize your hips those hips of yours very likely, if you are like so many people that spend a lot of time sitting on chairs, your hips probably feel a little bit stiff. If you try to go do like a lunge or squat or something of the sort, you might feel some impingement in that area. We break down exactly how to sort those things out for you absolutely free at alignpodcast.com. Com. We put together a brief masterclass on exactly how to open up those hips of yours and also unwind some of those unsightly patterns of staring into technology. So forward head posture, roll forward shoulders, all that stuff. If any part in your body is imbalanced, that imbalance will trickle through the rest of the system to create a whole abundance of compensatory patterns that make your life kind of suck. And that's what we get into there is how to unwind those patterns and stack and align that sweet, sultry body of yours. Uh, I hope you guys really enjoy that. Uh, you can also find the um, link for that in my bio on Instagram at Align Podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed the conversation. Thank you so much for reviews on iTunes. I read all of them and I really dig them. I really appreciate it. Thanks for reviews on the Align Method book and I hope you are loving your life. Here we go. Back to the convo with the great David Nurse. Mindset pivots. The time we're going through right now, everybody feels stuck. How, what is like buzzword is pivot right now. How do you pivot out of this situation? I do a lot of confidence development with NBA players. So I work on the basically how they can be their most unshakable confident self with NBA players. We could talk about go down that area. What was the, the Michael Jordan documentary called? It was The Last Dance. The Last Dance. I just watched that nonstop. Yeah. I couldn't stop. And you were a diehard Bulls fan? Die hard. Other than, as I aforementioned, Carl Malone, large, sweaty, black man <laughs> that hung up in my, my bedroom above my bed. No, it was in front of my bed. So I would see this just large, domineering man interesting. staring down interesting. at me, and it said, the mailman across the bottom. But what you don't know about <laughs> the mailman, Carl Malone, is he is you in the flesh. He is <laughs> chopping wood in the off season <laughs> with the beard. Like, he is woodsman, veins popping out of his arms. So, basically... That's how you became who you are because you had yeah. that Carl Malone poster. You might be onto something. So you are quite savvy with the history of MJ. When you watched the Netflix series, what do you think was missing from that? What do you think was, was it like an accurate depiction? I thought they did a really good job depicting his career and his cool way how they did it in his last season in flashback. But to be honest, and hopefully he's not listening to this podcast right now. I mean, hopefully he is for your sake, but hopefully he's not. But Listen in. He was not that uh, great a teammate as it looked. He wasn't that great a person as you might think. And it's tough to say that in society or anything in basketball saying Jordan might not be the greatest human being that ever lived. He's not just an ultimate god. Like, it, you don't say that. You get thrown down for saying something like that. But he had control of the tapes, and he made himself look like a really good person. Mm. Let's just say that. Well, do you think that it was a part of his grand plan of he needed to be a bit of a dick in order to achieve what they had and it was worth it? Absolutely. Yeah. 
He is like him and Kobe are on the same level. They're so competitive, so driven that they know nothing else other than expecting the best out of everyone. And sometimes that type of communication isn't always the best way to do it. That type of leadership might not be the best for everybody, but he held people to such a high standard, which I have an unbelievable amount of respect for. The people at the highest level, the elite performers, they're a little bit different. And Jordan is a little bit different. And maybe it goes... To the person that he is off the court too, but he's he's so driven, he's so competitive. Like I've had people tell me that they've they've played him in ping pong before, and he would not stop until he beat that person in ping pong. Like he's just that competitive. Whatever it is, he's trying to literally rip your throat out. At the end, it was kind of interesting how he was like brought to tears that he didn't win the seventh title. Is that what yeah. it's called? You call it a title? Yeah, title. Yeah. yeah. I wonder be, living inside the mind of of somebody like that if it's like to the benefit of that person to have that type of mindset or is it it's like living in kind of torture in a way man i would say it's probably living in torture i mean he's that great but he still wants more yeah. isn't that what we're all trying to find is trying to find a rhythm to our life and contentment to our life and not have what our feelings are based not on the results and Jordan was very results-based. And a lot of us in this world are results-based. Like even in his Hall of Fame speech, if you get the chance to watch that, check it out. Instead of being so grateful for everything like most Hall of Fame speeches are, he was calling out people that he played against in high school, the guy that took his spot on the high school team, like still going at people. And it's it's like, is there a point that you go over the line of thinking like this result, this title, this number of titles is going to make me happy? Yeah. Because if you put that as your your happy indicator, your joy indicator, you, you're never going to reach it. Never. So what do you do with NBA players exactly? What's like your, your job title? So I'm an NBA optimization coach, and that means I'm going to optimize the players both on court and off court. And my background has been in it, playing basketball. Like I, I literally thought I was going to play in the NBA. I, I came from the middle of nowhere, cornfields of Iowa, 6'2", unathletic, couldn't even touch the rim, but I thought I was going to play in the NBA. So I poured every ounce of my being into playing in the NBA. And I got to play college basketball, and I still thought, hey, I'm going to play in the NBA. I was so far from it. I had no backup plan, none at all. And I got I went and played overseas and I was I was playing in Spain and this sounds kinda cool, but really it was like it was a second division. It's more like that movie Will Ferrell semi pro where it's kinda like a joke. They're more concerned about where they're gonna go party after the game than they are the actual game. And I'm putting on all these extra two a days, film studies, everything I'm pouring everything into it and I get cut from this joke of a team, second division Spain, and basically my whole life is turned upside down, rubbed in the dirt, like everything that I put all my time and effort and energy into and I'm go back home feeling bad for myself living on my parents recliner chair for five months and this is where the pivot in my life really took place like I thought everything was over because when you think about it if you put all your time and effort into something and it's completely taken away from you like what do you do hmm. and I was sitting there on the recliner chair as I did for about five months straight and my mom would always say these these sayings or these quotes and usually they just go in one ear out the other ear but this one stuck she's she was doing dishes i can remember it vividly she said david when one door closes four open in an entire beachfront patio overlooking the ocean i was like what it, it caught my attention but it's so true like that door closed that door of playing closed but it opened to me what I was actually meant to do. All this time, all this extra detail, all this studying, all this extra effort was not for myself to play, but it was in how to show others, how I could coach others, how I could help others in these guys reach the NBA. And that's what I've been doing since then is, is using everything that I poured into playing and to be able to coach. Hmm. So what are you specifically like hands on? What are you doing with people? So I'm doing a lot of mindset development. So first of all, we'll look at what they need on court. Like how can they be the best 100% of the time? How can they function at their highest level? Like what is going to make them that all-star level? We'll look at what they need on their skill set. So maybe it's their shot they need to improve. So that's going to be our main focus for their skill set. With the mindset, what what do you, how do you, how do you do that? And what are most people missing that you work with? Yeah. So first of all, when I, when I break down a player, when I first am working with them, I'm going to figure out who they are, what makes them tick, what makes them motivated. I do what's called the Enneagram test. Are you familiar with the Enneagram test? It's the best way that I've found that that you can really understand 
somebody as why they are who they are, and they're able to understand why they are who they are. So it works twofold. Which which do you think I am? You are you're very driven. So I think you're an eight, but you're also a really really caring. You're really loving genuine. I would say you're an eight and a four. Oh, this is a different test. I thought it was the ENFP one. Which one is that? Oh, I don't know the, the letters. ENFP one. Oh, we got it. I'm you mixing up, I'm mixing up my okay. test. Hey, you got to do the Enneagram. It's a game changer. Do so you have every player do the Enneagram? I have every player do the Enneagram test and I have every player do the love language test, which uh, might sound kind of funny. What's your love languages? My love language is words of affirmation. So if you basically pump me up and tell me great things about me, I'm mm. going to love you. But there's other ones like there's there's gift giving and receiving, which is my my wife. I feel like she's all the love languages. I got to hit them all the time. There's there's quality time, physical touch, prostate massage. <laughs> that is the fifth one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is the physical touch. <laughs> That's the second edition. <laughs> Yeah, so I'll figure out basically their personality. I'll figure out what makes them tick, what motivates them. And then I, my big thing is I'm going to develop their confidence, what I call unshakable confidence. And you would think these players at this highest level, highest top performers are going to be confident all the time. But they're not. Just like all of us, we waver up and down on based on our results. And I go through a seven-step process with my players on how to give them absolutely unshakable confidence every time they step on the floor. Hmm. So you want to go when some someone's, well, so uh, that's something that I'm sure a lot of people experience, at least I experience pretty regularly, almost every day, I'd say, where I'll have glimmers of moments where I feel like pretty unshakable-ish. You know, the, the unshakable, that's, that's typically pretty brief, but like really good. I'm like, wow, I feel just, wow, like I'm so grateful to be in this body and in this world, like, whoa. And then the next minute, I'll kind of go through kind of this like apathetic, borderline despondent, like what the freak is the point of any of this? <laughs> and that's something I've heard with life in general, but it's a basketball analogy that the key to being, this is paraphrasing and butchering whoever actually said this, but essentially like the key to being really good at something or effective in life is to know enough to play the game well, but not so much to, to realize that the game doesn't matter. That's a good, I love that. <laughs> yes, if you very, get to that point where it's like, game, like, what is this board? You know, it's yeah. like, no, no, like, too far. Come back. Get in the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a really good point, man. But it, you touched on a point, too. Like, we'll have these times through our day where we really feel like we're in our zone. But then we'll have so many times where we're questioning ourselves. And, and we have 50,000 self-talk thoughts per day. 50,000. Like, it's, you're talking to yourself. You're saying something. About 80% of them are negative talks on average. Negative things we're saying to ourselves. What if we could flip that to have 80% of it be positive? And what I teach these NBA players to do and, and CEOs and high performers that I work with is how to, f how to set up your day, set up your habits to make it a lifestyle in which you're living in the affirmations of who you are, the true self-awareness. Confidence is not based on results. It's not based on what the world will tell us with ego, with swagger, with anything like that, but it's based on your true self-awareness. And I'm a big believer that we all have been given a gift, a God-given gift to share with the world. Now the question becomes, you find out what your, your gift is, what your passion is. Now the question is, do you hold that back? Because you're the only one that's going to hold it back. Or do you let it out? And that's where the true self-awareness confidence comes in. Hmm. So how do I start to manage that subconscious chatter that's going on in the background and, and start to re reconstitute things? Yeah, so that's that's one of the toughest things for people to do. So I'll give you an example of with, with NBA players, and then we'll dive into that even more, is, is redefining what words actually mean. So we all grow up hearing certain words and thinking certain words, and our subconscious works in the way that if you hear the word failure, you think already, you think it's something negative, right? If you think it's failure. But if you could redefine that, if you could pivot that and think about failure as this is a learning experience, this is the only way. If you can if you can craft this in knowing it's it's not a way, but it is the only way that you can grow is through failing, then you look at it and you embrace it more for what it actually is. And for basketball, I'll always ask a player, when was the last time you went in a shooting slump? And that means like a bad shooting performance. And they'll tell me, I can see their body language already droop and they'll be like, ah, oh, you know, I missed uh, 10 shots the other night. Just really, really bad. And then I'll say, hey, when was the last time you were in a shooting hippopotamus? And they'll look at me like, David, what, what are you talking about? You're crazy. But 
all I did there was change the word. The word slump has this negative connotation that made them feel bad about themselves because they're subconsciously, they've already been told that word is negative. But if you can flip it and you can redefine it, and that's what why I wrote the book, Pivot and Go, so you can redefine terms and you can pivot your mindset of what the world is telling you and what you might think and what's having you stuck and you pivot it a slightly different perspective that can literally open up your entire perspective. Hmm. Where do you think those thoughts come from in a person in the Western world? The thoughts as far as like negative yeah. subconscious why don't we, thoughts. Why do we shoot think, ourselves in the foot? Man, I think it's just because what society tells us, we have to be better. We have to be this. We have to be successful. Like to mean anything, you have to have a bunch of followers or to make a difference, you have to change thousands of people's lives. And I think it's just based on what everybody else around us is telling us. Our our self-worth needs to come from within us. And it's it's... It's easier said than done, but it needs to come to, from within us and not from around us. So if a person is uh, they're shooting a bad game and yeah. they're in that slump, what's the action steps to get them back out of the slump? Yeah, so I have each player that I work with will have a keyword. So that keyword, it's kind of like that movie Inception. You know, you've seen Inception where mm-hmm. they have that top that spins and it just kicks them back into the moment, puts them back into the right frame. Right. So they'll have a cue word. So if something is, if it's going crazy out of control or it's going even really good, they'll have a cue word to bring them back to level even keel. And each player has their own cue word that they choose. And I also use it, I'm really big on on cues. And I have what's called choose your second. In basketball, there's a shot clock. And you can see it at any point. There's a shot clock above the hoop on both hoops. There's 24 seconds in the shot clock. So I have them choose a number. And whatever their number is, any time that they look at that shot clock, that number is a trigger that kicks them back into their most confident self, which is what's what I call their highlight real self. And each player that I work with, we create their personal highlight reel, meaning their best game they've ever had, their best clips. It could be from high school, from college, and we put it together in like a two to three minute clip. I have them watch it every before every practice before every game because that is who they can be they've been that person before and if they live in that moment they can be that person when they step on the floor so this this choose your second when it hits like let's say my number 16 i'm having i'm struggling i see that 16 boom i remember okay but it it cues me it kicks me back into it Hmm. it takes a little while to develop but once they get this down like i've seen it absolutely change players careers like for example one player that i'm working with this year he's been a one of my one of my close friends for a long time he was a bench player and he's kind of up and down he'd have good games and bad games and we started working on these cues and different mental development skill sets and literally he the last week of the nba season before it all shut down for COVID, he was the eastern conference player of the week like he's just been killing it. Nice. So how would that relate to a person that doesn't play basketball? It would relate to, so same thing with choose your second. You're going to have a watch or a phone that's going to have your, they're going to have the clock on it and you can choose a second anytime between one and 60. And your highlight reel would be the time that, because everybody has felt that moment where they're in the zone. Like you were talking about earlier, like there might be a time of the day you're feeling like, man, I'm unshakable confidence or, or you're in the zone when you're, I mean, bench pressing me a hundred times or something like that. But everybody's had that time they're in the zone, whether it's in a business meeting, whether it's a talk they're given, a phone call, they're just crushing it. So you replay that in your mind, that power of visualization of seeing yourself at your best, and that's your highlight reel. Then you have your choose your second. Your second, whenever it comes back, you're sitting in a business meeting and you see 17 on the on your clock, boom, it kicks you back into that. You have your cue word. Basically, the same tools that I use for NBA players, you can use in everyday life. I also have a tool that's it's confidence through comparison. So most people say comparison. No, don't do it. Don't compare yourself. It's going to drive you nuts. The, the Instagram comparison is bad. Yes. But if you compare yourself to the people that you want to be like, the people that you can see yourself being like in your field, the top people in your field, and you study what they do, that's great comparison. I'll have my NBA players study the best player in their position and we'll just steal from them we'll learn from them and they'll build the habits just like they do like for 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 me for example when i was made that pivot from playing to coaching i wanted to be the best shooting coach 
in the NBA. That was my goal. I wanted the best shooting coach in the NBA. So I looked up who is the best shooting coach in the NBA. Found the guy, Chip England for the San Antonio Spurs. I emailed him. I called him. I wrote him letters. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I even went out to Las Vegas where they're playing in the NBA Summer League just so I'd have the opportunity to meet him. And I met him. And he realized how much work I was putting in just to have a meeting with him. And he respected that, took me under his wing, and helped me become a shooting coach with the Brooklyn Nets. Just through comparing myself to who I wanted to be like. Yeah. You have obviously, maybe not obviously, it seems like you've looked into NLP stuff. You got into like neurolinguistic programming type things. You're talking about modeling would be what that would be in an NLP talk. Okay. So you're looking at a person that you would like to... Yeah start to embody some of the characteristics of that individual and you you watch their stuff and you kind of like study how the person walks how Mm. the person talks Mm. you know tone pacing um, how they choose to dress postural meanings all that stuff and start to kind of model those characteristics until they start to kind of play that hand in a way so that's nlp is not that's like directly out of nlp shizzle where you Uh, where you get these ideas from these are ones that to be honest that i've seen work from coaches that are mentors of mine or things that I've just created. Yeah. That's really cool to hear that there is something. I've actually never heard of NLP, but it sounds Uh, awesome. I'm going to have to dive into it. Yeah, it's a good thing. But that's, you see, like Kobe, he did that to Michael, to Jordan. Like even his interviews would sound the same as Jordan's were. Yeah. But that's, that's the respect to how, how well that works. I think you can get to a point with the modeling where it's, you can take on that person's characteristics and it's, there's like a, a gap between where you're so far away from them and then you start to use the kind of like the blueprints that they've they've already outlined you can walk in that path and then eventually you can come to a point where you can kind of you've taken what you needed and you can kind of let go of the other parts and it actually is genuinely you because i think there can be a a bit of a fear or concern of like well i don't want to just become this person because that person's already taken you know but it's like you, you you gather the bits that you'd like it's like the bruce lee quote he's like you know ga- i don't know how it goes gather what's what does he go drop the things that you don't need whatever drop the st- i know what you're saying when you're modeling something yeah. drop the stuff that you don't need take what yeah. you have and then create what's what's meaningfully actually yours yeah. i don't know how's, how's he go how's that quote i'm not exactly kind of? sure we're gonna look that one up though we gotta look that I, up. I like i love you bruce know what quote lee. i'm talking about i know what you're saying I, it's a tip of my tongue i know there's one that's be you you know everybody I'm else about, is taken though. anyways but so that one but i think there could be a concern of being like oh i'm just gonna become that person right that, that'll yeah, be whack like you're actually going to be exactly. So how would I specifically go in and model another individual? So just like you're talking about modeling them and taking the things away from them that you know that are going to help you get to where you want to be, where your ultimate goal is. And like I'm, I'm a big believer in setting just huge, crazy, out of this world dream goals and then having the steps of how to get there. Because everybody talk about the why and, the, and, I mean, Simon Sinek and the purpose and the why and all that kind of stuff. But, but give me some hows. Give me some actual tools to get there. And, one, and some of those tools to get there is embodying what these other people have already done to get there. Now, this is where it comes back to your true self-awareness. Your one gift that you've been given is going to be different than this other person. You are not that person. There's going to be, there's something different about you. There's something different that makes you tick. Maybe you're something different on the Enneagram or something, but you take those steps that they have done, that you have seen them lay out for you, literally a blueprint. And that's, that's the stuff you take and add to your, to your core, to your true self-awareness. So you feel like, Hey, I'm not stealing from this person. I'm just, I'm, I'm learning from this person. What's challenging for you specifically? Not working with clients, not working with like, so what are, what's reoccurring things you're like, that this is like hard in my life. Yeah, man. It's the constant battle of what I teach too, is like, what is success? Like, where do I find it? Do I find it in the book being a New York Times bestseller? Do I find it in having a big audience to, to go speak to? And Where do you think that comes from? Yeah, I think. It Why comes, does success matter? What does success? I think mean? it comes from being really driven. Like I've always been that way, very competitive while playing basketball. And in where does the drive come from? Drive comes from it's it's internal. I think it's you're either two. There's two types of people. You're type I or type X. Internal motivation or external motivation. And I think everybody is at a different percentage point. I think my internal motivation is pretty high just because I've grown up really given nothing and everybody's telling me I couldn't do it. So it kind of 
kind of drove me on that sense. Do you feel like there's any childhood switches or anything that would create a driven person versus not? Like with, as far as like Enneagrams and all that stuff, like yeah. these are things that classifications that we kind of button on after the fact. But I just did a, a, a podcast with, with Bruce Lipton, who's like a childhood yeah. hero. Well, not childhood, whatever childhood. I, I mean, I think I'm still a child in a lot of ways, but <laughs> hero since I was like 15. And yeah, he's been really big on just spreading the word of like epigenetics and how you're not governed by this genetic code. Each gene has the potential for 2,000 different proteins that it can manifest depending upon the environmental conditions or this skin wrapped petri dish of 50 trillion cells and the environment kind of pokes and prods and shifts and turns and that's the expression of of your you-ness that comes out and so i wonder with like like what's the recipe for a driven individual and then from there how does one how do you manage that drive so, without it consuming you yes yes that's so very true i think anybody's genes you can basically you can change them you're never a product of your genetics you're never a product of where you're born but you always have the power to change those now the way to change it and the way to do it is i mean through literally the ten thousand hour rule i know it's cliche to say that but there's there's no substitution for actually putting in the time, putting in the work. Now, putting in the time, putting in the work and doing it in a deep practice type of way and not just uh, you're going through the motions 10,000 hours to get there. And the all-consuming question, now that's, I mean, that's that's tough because when you want to be great at something, when you want to be the best at something, it's going to consume you to some point, to some level. And, and I talk about balance being BS. Like, I don't think... I don't think you have to have balance. I don't I don't believe in the 80/20 rule. I don't buy into that. Like if if, if I want to be in the best shape possible, I'm not going 80/20 on my diet or I'm not even calling it a diet, but I think you go all in. You go all in with what your passion is and with what drives you, but also in the understanding that you have to be doing it for something bigger than yourself. If you're only solely concerned about your success and your the markers that you hit, you'll drive yourself insane. What does bigger than yourself mean? Doing it for somebody somebody you love, doing it for, for God, doing it for a purpose that you're going to change others' lives. Like if you went through a very difficult situation, like in, instead of feeling, woe is me, and I'm just surviving through that, you pivot that into a thriving situation. And you know that, hey, there's going to be somebody else that goes through this as well. Now I can help them. I can lead them through that. What is God? God, to me, God is the creator of the universe. God is is literally what made us here. It's everything. Is God a, a, an individual point? Is God an all-consuming blanket? Is God... Uh, is this sauna and you and I and the air <laughs> God? I do love the sauna, but no, God is. <laughs> <laughs> feels, feels great. Feels, yeah, the humidity. I can feel some. God is, to me, is, is what, what it says in the Bible. God is the creator of the universe, and he gave his son Jesus to come down here and basically take our place to die for our sins in the in what we what we deserved he took that away from us to be able to live in that type of love with him and ultimately live in eternity with him i want to take a quick moment and thank a vital mineral referred to in the english language as magnesium magnesium is literally one of the only supplements that i will actually purchase with my own monies reason being it is quite deficient in modern soil Lots of monocropping and things of the sort that end up trashing our soil and leaving many a human ever since the 1950s, apparently from what I read. About 80% today of our population is deficient in this vital mineral, which helps us with fat metabolism. It helps us with detoxification, helps us with production of energy and digestion and all sorts of very important things. When you purchase various different supplements of magnesium, oftentimes they only have a couple or one or a few different forms of magnesium. There's actually seven different forms. And our friends over at Bio Optimizers, which make up some of the raddest probiotic supplements that I've come across, they have come up with the Mag Breakthrough, which is a magnesium supplement that I've been utilizing for the last month or so. And I really enjoy it. And we, as you can imagine, have a special discount 
discount code for y'all. If you have interest in up in your magnesium game, you can get yourself a 10% discount by going to magbreakthrough.com slash align podcast. That's M-A-G-B-R-E-A-K-T-H-R-O-U-G-H.com forward slash align podcast. Uh, on there, you can use Align 10 and you get yourself 10% off. If you do not love that sweet, delicious, vibrant magnesium that you will consume, you can get a full money back guarantee. So if you're not loving it, they'll give you your money back. No big deal. No questions asked. Get yourself 10% off on this stuff. Go to magbreakthrough.com slash align podcast. And uh, I know you guys are going to devour that stuff. All right, here we go. Back to the scheduled programming with the David Nurse. Pow. What are your thoughts of cultures that grew up with a, a different version of, of the Bible, such as Muslim folks or people that grew up in a Buddhist household, Tibetans, people that their culture, their grandparents, all the people they love and appreciate and respect had a different story? Yeah, and that's, I mean, I would never discriminate against anybody else's beliefs or religions. Um, I just, uh, I hold true to the, the notion that Jesus is the only way, God is the way. There's a lot of, when you go really in depth into a lot of other religions, there's some, there's some really differing things that'll, that'll stand out. And I, I, I'm not well versed enough to speak on like, Hey, this is exactly where it, it, it doesn't coincide or doesn't jive, but there's so many prophecies that Jesus fulfilled. It's, I mean, everything in the Bible, he lived that out. And like, I, I'm on the, I'm on the belief of that. Hey, there, there's heaven and there's hell. But if I don't believe in either of them, when I die, then I'm just dead then it's done. But if I believe that there is heaven and, and I take the, like, and I live for Jesus here on earth, like then I have the, then there's possibility that there's eternal life, which is promised in the Bible to be thousands of times better than it is here. And man, I, even though we're in this crazy COVID time, I love life here. Like I love it. The thing that I don't understand with that is if that other place out there, my belief is more that it's all, you know, it's all interconnected, it's integrated, it's, it's, it's within. So the ideal kind of like dualistic perspective, there's this out there-ness that's a thousand times better than, than the here-ness why don't we just cancel this thing? Yeah. What's the point of being at this shitty party? <laughs> like, what are we doing here? Yeah. Remember this damn sauna? You know, that, that put is. Put deodorant on, that pay is, taxes. This is nonsense. <laughs> I'm out of here. I'm going to heaven. I'm over it. Uh, is that Hawaii? Are we talking about Hawaii? <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, Hawaii feels pretty heavenly. No, I, I think we're here for a purpose, like we were talking about, bigger than ourselves, to share this with other people and help them find that love like living for living for for jesus for me has made life here on earth so much more joyful than it was before i wasn't always living like that it was when i was 23 and i was just finishing up college i, I started going to this like this little get together this little hangout and it's it's a chapter in my book too is and like i was the furthest from thinking like jesus is the way like trust me like i was not and these people at this place called fuel, just this little get together. I, I honestly thought they were on crack. I thought they were on drugs. Like they just were filled with joy. And I was like, this is weird, but I had to keep coming back to see what it was. And, and even though I thought they were on drugs for the first two months, I realized that, I mean, they had love for Jesus in their heart. And that was where their true joy is. I was like, I gotta, I got, I need this. Like I, I want to have this consistent joy. And now, now I know that it's not, it's not all on my shoulders. I don't have to go through this alone. It's not like he's got the best timing for me. He's got the plan laid out for me. This is basically we're just working on house money right now. So do you believe in a distinct uh, heaven and hell? Like these yeah. are these are isolated locate. Where, where do yes. they exist? I don't know where they exactly exist. I don't think you go below the earth or you go in the clouds, but it's in it, it's it's in something that in in your soul. It's in what I I mean to be honest, what it can't really grasp physically. And that's where a lot of this blind faith comes in. And it's, would your it's belief, like, would your belief be that any person that doesn't accept Jesus's blood being shed on the cross, I was raised Christian. So I yeah, have like yeah, all the, the like all, all the, all the, all the stories, I know, all the stories are well ingrained. Yeah. <laughs> um, so my pretty meaningful pivot in my life from a from from a epistemological perspective of kind of like my viewpoints of what the hell's going on here was me and my my homie ian pape 
Ian might listen to this podcast, yeah, I think, Ian. actually. Yeah. And we were smoking a blunt, rolling up a Dutchie. I lived in the I lived in the East Coast, and we were in I think it was Subaru Outback or something like that. It was green, and we're in there and we're getting high and we're talking, you know, about whatever we're talking about as as like fifteen year old, sixteen year old kids do. And there was a moment where he was like, he was way cooler than me. He was better at life than I was. <laughs> <laughs> like he was he was like more well read. He was you know he was just he was better at sports and stuff. He's like in all this weird stuff. Played music like someone that I was like fucking eating your dope. And so he was studying Buddhism, and he was really excited about, you know, all the different philosophies and all that, and we talk about things like that. And I had this, like, moment, this question for him, where I was like, you know, we're both quite high, and I'm like, so do you, or no, he asked me, rather, we were talking about religion. I had a similar conversation, except, you know, it was the other way. And that was a moment where he's like, so I was like, do you believe that I'm going to, when I transition out of this body he probably said die instead of like new age you talk like that <laughs> i'm gonna go to hell because i have these other belief systems and i had this moment of like yeah i do yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i was like yeah. i'm like hold on no i don't <laughs> like you're awesome <laughs> like eddie from my perspective at that point which i don't know what the hell's going on. this could be a simulation i think 50 50 coin flip it's a simulation <laughs> um you know, but for any in the story that I have in my mind of, of of God, I would think that any like meaningful, relevant, all knowing God that I could possibly drum up in my imagination would be like Ian, you're dope. Yeah, <laughs> like you're sweet. You know, right. like you're you're good. You get a pass, even though you're really into these other other stories and books, which have been created through me because all is created through me. Um, and the fact that you have this this insatiable urge and itch to to feed yourself through this philosophy and such that isn't necessarily this one specific. You didn't grab that one book. I'm not going to put you into this fiery inferno for eternity. Yeah, that's a so that was a pivot moment for me. That is a pivot moment, and <laughs> that's a very that's a very I mean that's very real, and that's very tough to to decipher and tell people, but. Like if you go by the Bible and that's what you live by. It's... So is your belief that I, if I, if a meteor hit this sauna right now, and I don't give a shit either way, right? like, <laughs> if, would, no. would, would I go to hell and would you go to heaven? Do you fully accept Jesus Christ as your savior? No, not at all. I think that Jesus is, a, is, a, is not, not at all. I would accept, I think Jesus just as well could have been a metaphoric story. It could have been like, I like the Upanishads. I like the you know reading the Bhagavad Gita. I like the Quran. I like uh, you know a lot of different texts that I see a lot of congruencies between them. I've listened to most of like the spiritual things on audiobook. I grew up reading the Bible, and what I hear on the audiobooks and have read in the Bible. I need to reread the Bible. Is I see almost like the same sentence in a whole bunch of different languages around earth and then one sentence that was written in english or whatever it's said in english we're like i hear the frequency <laughs> so this is the only one you know and then there's this team of people that hear that frequency they align with it and then everyone else it sounds like blah, 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 blah. but they're all saying the same thing right. we just haven't kind of opened up to being able to hear that yeah that's just my limited yeah. perspective of yeah, what's yeah, going yeah. On no, no. so i'll give you two things as you believe so you talk maybe maybe Jesus is just a a word or an idea or something. Do you believe in Caesar, Julius Caesar? Maybe maybe not, I don't know. I okay. mean history well, history people, history means his story. Yeah, so it's yeah, it's, it's, true, it's a story. Yeah. Most people would say yes, but there's only I think it was less than 15 written records of Caesar actually doing anything and there's over 3000 actual written records of everything that Jesus did. Even even evidence of showing that he that he died and he and he rose again that he's been that he was seen again, so there's a lot of actual physical evidence that it did happen, and but I mean it's still a long time ago so people it's it's tough to really grasp and anything that we can't grasp is tough, and I would I would just say anybody listening out there just watch the case for Christ it's a really really interesting easy watch about an hour long it's this guy who was the biggest atheist like literally was the biggest atheist didn't believe in Jesus at all I was like okay I'm just going to study this I'm going to prove exactly why Jesus doesn't exist and he a scholar went around and he tried to figure it out and came away thinking like Jesus is the only way so it's a really interesting it's a book and a movie and 
it's it's just a cool way to see like hey it's it's not all about like like believing in Jesus and God it's not about religion like Jesus didn't Jesus didn't come down to make religion or make structure or make like you got to do this so you got to do that like Jesus was the ultimate like do the opposite like people would say you can't do this on a Sunday and then he would work on Sunday or feed people on Sunday or heal people on Sunday or you can't do this and he would do the opposite so he's he was kind of like a rebel, to be honest. And most people will look at it like, oh, Jesus, it's this structure that you got to do. It's you got to go to church on Sunday. You got to be a good person. But Jesus never said, hey, this is what a good person what is. What happened to people's eternal souls before 2,000 years ago? Before they, JC was, was, yeah, was yeah. doing his crucifixion So they stuff. would have had the Old Testament and they were looking forward to what was coming. So they would believe in the savior that was to come. Now, I think that would be tougher to do. So were they all just like get out of jail free card people for the previous like millions of years before? Or do you believe that there was only 4,000 years before and the original date of everything was like, what was it, April 4th, 4,000 <laughs> BC or something like that? Uh, yeah, you know, I don't, I, I don't. Really... It wasn't April 4th, but it was something, it was something about 6,000 years ago. It's it was a potential, a potential story from the Bible. Uh, that was when God created, created man and all that stuff. Yeah, so yeah, I do believe that man he, came from the rib, the rib of no, yeah, women, no, women came from the rib of, right. of guys. Yeah, women came from us. The we damn came patriarchy. First, <laughs> but we were Don't the ones think that that's messed up. up. Don't you think that's some his, some his story stuff? Oh, what was that? that Ladies came from the rib of a guy. Come on. I, I, like that. I think that that happened. I think that G, that that God created man and woman and like I don't know if it exactly went down. Like it's like, hey, here's the rib. Boom automatically a woman is created i don't know if the the fruit was I think he like pulled a rib out <laughs> like a ribeye was there a grill involved i'll tell you what's a big misconception like, though man you want to hear this one there like a your mind. clay it pot was, it wasn't an apple that was eaten it was most likely a fig they didn't mm. really have apples in that area mm. figs what do you think of the acacia we'll get off this very soon what do you think of the the <laughs> the, 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 the the burning bush and most so i think most of this stuff is symbolic for probably dudes 2000 years ago tripping on various different plants and having various different have you ever utilized psychedelics in your life i never have all right so in psychedelic times um in in those experiences i think one typically trends towards having certain revelations and it seems almost like as as though your you-ness your ego there's like an ego death almost like a perhaps like a like a like a crucifixion of sorts and then you 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 know you reemerge with you know, a, a different person. You, you've you've been born again, um, and so my my belief, which again is just like a, a very you know limited story with lots of missing pieces, um, is that a lot of that stuff is them kind of construing together their experiences that were probably at least in part through like stumbling upon. Um, you know, the, the acacia tree was, was the burning bush. There's a lot of acacia trees around there. So like the Moses burning bush and all that stuff. The acacia tree has DMT, dimethyltryptamine. And so people, that's like known as like one of the most powerful psychedelics. You know, so then there was, yeah, there, there's various different talk of like, like psilocybin and, and, you know, cannabis and all that stuff. But you don't see that explicitly in the Bible, but I think you do see it alluded to. And so my feeling is that there's been a little bit of a conflation of people's kind of psychedelic, like, whoa, experiences. And they write it down and they have kind of these, like, it seems like prophetical experiences from thousands of years ago. And then with time, it's whispered down the lane. And then there's power and agendas and manipulations and new books and where it's taken out and chapters added. And now it's like becomes his story. Mm. And like who my question is like, who the fuck is he? <laughs> <laughs> Why do they keep rewriting these books? That's Which it. book is real? <laughs> How do you know? It's an interesting outlook to take on that. And I'll, and I'll say I've never heard that before, but hey, it's, it's, it's deep thinking. And <laughs> Jesus did enjoy a lot of wine. So, man, you never know. Uh, the, what I see is from is, is the Dead Sea Scrolls were found, were literally writings exactly of what backed up the Bible, and they were literally found not too long ago, sometime in the mid 1900s, in these caves in Israel. I thought they alluded to the direct, psychedelic stuff. Well, I don't, I don't, not that I heard of. Look up but Dead Sea I'll Scrolls, psychedelic Christianity. 
may, may, maybe I think Moses there was, with that beard was hiding some things I think in he there. Was, I don't know. I think he was hitting the DMT pipe. <laughs> That's funny, man. It's funny because I, I do have a chapter in my book called, called The Acacia Tree. It's really funny. Oh, good. Because I have been in Israel, and, and the analogy See? it was – is base is completely it's different. Evidence. It's, it's no, about you, the fruit you're producing because it doesn't produce much. It doesn't look like it produces a lot of fruit, but in there there's a lot of lot of fruit you can eat for a year from. Just do you that know? Tree Mo, do you know Moses was hitting that acacia? Do you know that was what they were likely alluding to? I mean, I don't know, know that anybody knows. I don't know. Maybe that uh, maybe that started the burning bush on fire. Do you know my dad it? went to search for Noah's Ark. He went to. He went to search for it. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, he was down with. He was. He's down with JC. That's that's awesome, Big man. Time. <laughs> I gotta meet your dad. Bring your dad in this son of man. <laughs> yeah, he went out there. The whole thing. We did like expedition Mount Ararat. That's really cool. How yeah. did it turn out? Did he find? No, I didn't find anything. Uh, yeah. What do you think? You think Noah's Ark was legit? You think that's real I think shit? It's, I think it's real. I think I think God cleared the earth at that time. So was all the humans right on that little that little little speck of land? What about like the rest of Earth at that time? I don't know. I feel like I think Earth was at that point where it was a Pangea, where everything was together, and it just phew, had that. Just two thousand years right ago, the whole Earth got got Not two thousand years off. ago. Whenever how long Noah ago, was? How, how was long Noah? Was Noah? Noah was a while ago. Noah was. 3, do you think the Earth plus. was created six thousand years ago, or do you think it's more like like humans around three point eight million? Slash Earth being you know billions. I 2. Think the 2 Earth or can be there for a long time. I think. I mean, God's God's track of time and our track of time is different, and it's really tough to grasp. I think the Earth could be there for billions or millions or whatever years, but people, yeah, more six thousand. Six thousand! Come on, dog. Gary <laughs> age started ten thousand years ago. That's that. Uh, <laughs> people be farming ten thousand years back. Whatever tools and shit, paintings, music. <laughs> whatever an Adam and Eve came along. Six the, years ago, the people Dejev, started the Dejev Bay pipe. I always say that word wrong. Was found in Slovenia, a cave in Slovenia. It was from the the femur of a a cave bear. And it was like drilled out, and they, you know, they carbon date it back to being 43,000 43, years old. Wow! So bitches be playing flutes. Maybe and they're caves. playing. May maybe or may not have been a. See, that's what I'm saying. Maybe this know. time of whatever this time is. Maybe it's even even more. I couldn't answer that one for you. <laughs> I don't know God's time. Just like don't it, you ever have moments just, where you're like <laughs> you're like hold on, like this doesn't add up. There's a lot. Of you're stuff. like I'm just gonna go blind faith. Screw it. To be honest, screw it, science. I mean, there's a lot. Like no, I think I think that. God and science work together. Like there is like tell me this on <laughs> earth listen to this. Look this up too. All right. Like there is a like 1 in 8 billion zillion chance that just so happens that earth has this temperature where people can actually live. Like the the odds of that are just astronomically crazy. No, no, no. The odds like, of that, that are perfect. Like there's got to be something that created it, right? It's not just like a boom a snap and there's not there's not like then you look at beautiful sunsets, you look at the ocean, you look at all like that just happened. Like somehow it just this happened. The odds of humans existing in with this atmosphere and having perfect balance of nitrogen, oxygen, all that stuff, and gravity, nine point eight meters per second square, holding all of our bones <laughs> and our cells being able to respond and integrate and you know, communicate and circulate. Um, it's a hundred percent odds that that would happen if that's how odds work, because we are the earth. Like we're not a, you're not this this body that happened to be. You might have, I think, coming from alien races. That's also I'm like fifty fifty on that. <laughs> um, but your body, it is the Earth. Like Alan Watts, dead philosopher fellow who I like greatly love, he talks about apple trees appling. You know, and so you look at the apple tree, and it's like you see these apples popping off of it, and it's like that's what apple trees do. They they apple. You know, and Earth trees, Earth planets, they, they, they people. You know, so we are a direct expression of this atmosphere. We're a direct expression of this Earth, and and we're just we're just in the symphony. You know, so I don't think that personally it doesn't make sense to me that humans. It seems very egotistical to believe that humans are like the center of everything, but then at the same time. I think that because I think we're just in circulation with all, but at the same time, you could also argue that uh, we and I and you are at the center of anything, everything, because without your visual experience taking in this information and creating this cinema that is you call your world and I call mine, exactly. none yeah. of this would exist. It's true. So we kind of, yeah. shit's contrarian, <laughs> is what and I'm that's saying. That's okay. And that's okay. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I and, and I love you. Whether we agree on it or not, I love you, man, and I'll always love you. 
I would just say. Just, what about when I'm burning in hell? Uh, do we like call to, collect? You're not going How to, do we no. do it? You're not going to. You're gonna watch. You think I'm gonna? I'm gonna, gonna watch gonna the, gonna the watch blood the of Christ. For, you're gonna watch the case for Christ. What is the Mel Gibson one? Uh, the Mel Gibson one is the Passion. It's oh, I got yeah. I got hyped on that shit. It's a good one. Man. I was getting down on yeah, Passion. There you go. I wept. See, I wept for Titanic There's... too. <laughs> I went for a lot of movies, man. I was so obsessed with Titanic when it came out. Before it came out, I thought Titanic was made for me because I was obsessed with an elementary school. There weren't a lot of subjects that I was like really excited about. The subject of Titanic. I've always been very enamored by death. The idea of someone being dead was very fascinating to me. And you You as well. You just went down a different a different path post twenty three. And what I'm finding out about We came from inverse locations. We did, and we all. Came I went together. deep in the JC growing up, and then I I split. Now I'm down with I reversed it. You know, Hare Krishna and you know Buddha and all the all the all the boys. But we're both and now. girls, more girls too. <laughs> why aren't they, why the damn patriarchy, man? It's nonsense. <laughs> Ladies are the they're the the the, the birthing vessel of life. They need to get some more props. I, I how know. did a, how did a woman come from the rib of a man? A man's head comes out of her vagina. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. It had to start come somewhere. On. It had to start somewhere. That's dude. Some dude was he was. Uh, they were hating on vaginas, and they're like, <laughs> we don't even need them. We'll just make humans out of ribs. <laughs> What if that was the way we still did it? You had kids. You, you had, had rib babies. Had rib babies. We're yeah. getting closer. C sections. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's jacked up. Point. Yeah. They're getting closer and closer to the rib. Are they really? Well, I don't know. I, I don't mean, know. your <laughs> vagina, your coming out of your belly is closer. All than I your know rib. is we definitely both have a passion for Titanic. <laughs> That's what's one thing we can agree on. For me, is like I didn't realize Titanic might have been set up. Like I, I thought they just. Iceberg, You're a conspiracy theory Titanic person? I'm not a conspiracy theory, but now it makes more sense the stories I hear about I've Titanic. I've never heard any conspiracy yeah. theory Titanic yeah, story. I know. It's, it's, oh, what is this? It's, well, You're dropping JC talk on the podcast. Now we're going to talk about Titanic we, we conspiracies? Could, we could go down a rabbit hole. And it, What's the conspiracy? That there were people on the ship that they wanted to be taken out. So... They had the person driving the ship, drive it in the There iceberg. was like Japanese were kamikazes really, down there? No, no, no. There's some really big powerful people that the other powerful people wanted to have taken out and oh, such and such. You think Titanic was a hit? Like mafioso shit? I, that's, I'm kind of leaning that direction now that I'm learning that we probably didn't land on the moon and I thought we did on that too. I thought everything this is was gonna real, This one Aaron. of those ridiculous was podcasts. <laughs> well, so we didn't land on the moon. Titanic was actually a hit for between who and who? I, big money and big money. I'm not exactly sure of the names, but look it up. You're going to find something about Titanic it. Titanic conspiracy. Titanic conspiracy. That's the new thing. The uh, moon shit, though. That one's heavy. The moon one that always f- got me. I that wanted, flag shouldn't have been blowing. I know, man. And I want it to be <laughs> true so bad. It would make sense because of the whole Soviet space race thing for us to, to make a... I think landing on the moon in general... It's like, we could probably get that. But in that moment where it was such a, an important cultural then. thing to just show, I would not be surprised. Just for, just for the sensibility of, like, we need to win this race. Okay, it seems like they're going to get it. Uh, how could we knock this thing out in three days? Oh, we could we could stage it. We'll bang that thing out of the park. <laughs> no, problem. no problem. We got that shit. But what I truly, fully believe is that the moon is made of Swiss cheese. Like that's that's a proven fact. Like Swiss cheese. Are you a flat earther? <laughs> no. What no. other fucking we are going beliefs do you com- do we completely disagree on? Let's see. P- pick one, and then I'll say <laughs> if I agree or not. <laughs> I don't know what else. I love. Oh, Tupac. Tupac, I think he's dead. Think yeah, he's, he's dead. dead. Okay, I agree. I think that. Tupac might have been a, a bisexual man. Ooh, I see. I don't. I don't even know. You gotta watch people listening. Watch his old interviews, and he's like, "There's some. I don't know why he was being interviewed when he was young." Um, and he was like probably sixteen, seventeen or so. But he's very flamboyant, mm. and the way that he communicates, and he's very. He just feels very like nurturing and feminine, and all like really brilliant qualities. Yeah. Um, I think probably most people are much more bisexual than they believe. Uh, they've just been kind of brought up with a. They've been indoctrinated into a system to believe that like, you know, 
fag is like a really bad word, right. you know, and don't be so gay, don't be such a fag, right. you know. So growing up in like, especially Latin culture, it's like even, you know, 10x what it is in, in Western culture, yeah. American culture. So you grow up with this story that this is, you know, this is that, but then you zap over to Roman times with your homies JC and Julius <laughs> Caesar, <laughs> and they're, they're blowing dudes to get their, the, the mana or the power from like the more powerful warriors. So that was like Spartan times. They're just they're just taking it in the bum and oh, the whole the whole thing. Stuff, no doubt. They used yeah. to kill their babies too if they weren't super strong. Aren't we blessed to live where a hey, coronavirus, COVID, you can stay as long as we don't have to go back to those type of times. I don't know. I don't know. Crazy world we're living in here, man. Where do we go next? My question to you is, where does this thing go next? It's a fucking simulation. Is, I mean, <laughs> when does it stop? Like when do we like? <laughs> like we're sitting in the sauna with just full mask gear up, so we can't even. Br- no, I'm just kidding. No, but we're not. Well, the sun is we... the sun is for protective. Yeah. You know, whatever. Um, we should wrap this bitch up because I got to go play paddle ball. Let's wrap it up on the on the beach in the simulation. Okay, I'm gonna put the paddle ball. Get you, man. Game in. You got. Hey, you... I'm gonna do some cheat codes. <laughs> Smack the ball harder. Flames will come off of it. Um, Thanks for allowing me to poke and prod you about Dude, your about your uh, right. your beliefs Man, that I, for the most part, completely disagree on. But it's okay. <laughs> hey, I will always, I will never <laughs> judge anybody or tell you you have to believe something. I'll just tell you where I come from. <laughs> Take it or leave it. But man, I I, I love you. I like love you, brother. man. Yeah, I and appreciate it. This has been really fun. I yeah. cannot say I've ever I've done a lot of podcasts. Yeah. This might be the most interesting <laughs> interesting one that I've done. And you could take that interesting in air quotes and however yeah. you want to take it. I've heard that before. Yeah, I think it's, but it's cool. You know, it's real. Like you ask real questions, you know? Like it's not just the setup of this pitch or like, hey, what happened into this chapter of the book? But right. it was like you ask real questions. You're well, really good. Well, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. That's really kind of you to say. Well, it's easy to speak the well, truth. I appreciate your uh, honesty with everything. And I appreciate you because I would imagine the majority of people listening to this podcast are, would probably fall into some kind of like alternative belief. Right perspective whatever so i appreciate you being honest with where you your your beliefs stand man it's the only way that we can be what was the quote we were trying to come back to is bruce bruce's quote something is, can you look it up right now it's yeah we could definitely look it up Experience absor- oh here it is, is this it? all right here all right, you want to so bruce lee i'm gonna spit this shit all right so for people listening i don't know why I can, this is such an easy one to remember i've said it lots of times too so uh research your own experience absorb what is useful reject what is useless Add what is essentially your own. Bruce motherfreaking Lee. I love that. What a boss. Be you. That's all I got to say. Be you. Yeah, that's right. All right, word up. Um, so people should get your book, I guess. What's what's the, uh, where, where, do, where do people find it? When does it come out? Anywhere books live. It comes out August 4th. Oh, cool. You can find it on Amazon. You can find it on my website, davidnurse.com. Yeah, anywhere. I just encourage you to do it. It's, it's You know what? I mean, obviously, I'm biased and I love it, but it's a tool that can help you take steps forward to getting unstuck and defining what your success is and figuring out how the actual blueprint of to achieve your goals. Word up. Well, uh, thanks for joining us. I had a great, I had a great time, and we got sauntered up. I'm healing my wrist. We did a cold plunge, which I typically don't do as nearly as much if there's not inspiration of other people watching. So, thank you, David, for doing it with me. And Yes, appreciate it. Somehow you have more veins popping out now than when we came in here. It's just popping. It's right. not fair. It's Thank not you all fair. for tuning in, and uh, <laughs> I hope you are enjoying your life. Over now. I hope you guys enjoyed that conversation as much as I did. What a unexpected turn <laughs> that ended up being. I didn't think that we were going to talk about religion, but could not. Man's got a crucifix on his hand. He's wearing a bracelet about JC as well, so... I really enjoy talking about God, learning about different people's perspectives and being able to honor various different people's perspectives as well. And I like learning from that. We can all learn from each other. So yeah, I hope you loved it. If you did, you can share little tidbits on there on the the Instagram at Align Podcast is where you'll find me or you can find David Nurse on there as well. Share us, tag us, let us know. Hope you enjoyed it. 
If you would like to mobilize those sweet, sultry hips of yours, you can jump on to while you're on the Instagram. You can click the little link and uh, in my bio and you will get a masterclass on how to start opening up those sweet hips uh, and also a few basic breakdowns on how you can start to help correct things like forward head posture and rolled forward shoulders and spines that are kind of hunchy and all that stuff. It's also found at linepodcast.com. All right. Thank you all so much for doing you. Thanks for views and the iTunes. Thanks for grabbing the Align Method book. Thanks for all the stuff. I appreciate the support. I will see you very soon. Pop.